We're going to the shepherd's field, to Bethlehem. We had brought four specific elements for points of intercession. We had oil, bread, a key Ronnie had brought, and we had the sheaves of wheat that Priscilla had brought from Jordan. We waited on the Lord. So much was prayed and so much happened in the heavens. We took our rings off and put them on the wheat as representing our sold out lives to the Lord. And then we took the wheat shafts and crumbled them up and threw them out over the shepherd's field, the very field where our Lord was heralded of his birth with the angels to the shepherds and the place where Ruth met Boaz. I remember this day, it was like a wedding day for us. It was like a feast. It was glorious and full of promises and full of declarations and full of hope. You're talking about Bethlehem? Yes. It was months before that and there was just a real need in my heart to come back into Israel and to release seeds of righteousness into the land again. And it had to do with personal issues as much as it had to do with the Arab nations. And we did it. We all came together and... Um, we went to the shepherd's field. I remember standing watching the sheep graze underneath <laughs> and, and the wild wheat blowing in the wind. <laughs> in a really amazing way that day, was the Lord opened Rania's eyes and um, he allowed her to see from his vantage point what it looked like. Wow. Do you remember your vision? Yes, I remember seeing this vision. And the vision was that I saw these women that have veil. When the veil began to fall off of their faces, they began to see the door. But they couldn't approach the door because that's the blindness of the veil is there. Mm. The pains, the sufferings, again, mourning, mm. self-pity. Mm -hmm. So many things blinded them from mm. seeing the door where the Lord's going to release that hope and, and life. When they opened the door, this huge big loaf of bread <laughs> came rolling out of the door. The loaf was made of scrolls hit the ground, did a great earthquake, kept on rolling down to Jerusalem. Uh, and I felt like it's the destiny of this city, being a place of a fresh manna, a fresh bread. Mm -hmm. I believe this is going to release this power and this um, awakening in the spirit realm over Jerusalem too. So that was really the yearning in the heart and the prayers were food from heaven that will be released to feed the hungry in the city. But not only that, it will go from this city to the nations as, as the Lord himself, our, our Lord came. So that's where, where my heart was pondering and where my heart was, uh, you know, like uniting with the spirit mm -hmm. to release these words over the city. Yeah. yeah. We really felt like it was time for the ruse of the Arab nations to head back into Bethlehem. Yeah. You remember that? Yeah, it was like a time to call the women forth to rise up and to make the covenant that they knew that they should step into. Just like Ruth made that covenant, not just with Naomi, she made it with Boaz when she laid at his feet there at the threshing floor. And when she made that covenant, it wasn't just a covenant of a ring, it was sacrifice. She went low and she laid herself flat on her face at Boaz's feet. Mm. And that's what we have to do. And that's my heart to see the Arab women rise up. In Bethlehem especially, there's an anointing on them to come and step into that, where they are ready to go to that low place, to take that step of humility and to make that covenant with their Boaz, with our king, just as it was alive for David when he was sitting on these hills and he wrote psalm after psalm after psalm and the word was so alive off his lips, rolling off these hills. There is a spirit of worship in this place. There is a spirit of worship on Bethlehem and that anointing, it is time for it to rise when we step into that covenant of humility. 
hope in heaven would come would come and rule in this place today that the heavens would open and gush forth father in preparation for boaz and ruth to receive the fulfillment of their reward mm. Allow the fulfillment of Ruth and Boaz to come forth in this place, Father. And I'm asking, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, that those people in this region, Father God, would come and be the overflow of the um, prize that's coming to Ruth and to Boaz and to Obed and to Jesse yes. and to David. Yes. And ultimately, Father God, to your son, Jesus Christ, mm. bringing glory and honor to you, God Almighty. Widows, orphans are so precious to God's heart. So in the law of Moses, he makes a beautiful provision for them and he commands his people to leave wheat in the margins of the field so they can glean from it and live. Do you remember when we were in Jordan and there was this incredible young man who was a villager? Yes. And how he stunned us all? He continually was offering you wheat. He wanted you to have the, the ground wheat, the flour from the hill country. He was a Muslim guy, but when he heard about our journey based on the Bible, he just captured his heart. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And his hospitality <laughs> overtook you. And every day he would come to us. You remember that? Of course, I remember. We were quite a funny bunch. <laughs> Long, blonde, square, Chinese. But he looked at me. Yes. He, he welcomed the Israeli. He welcomed yes. Naomi into his land. Mm. He is offering you bread. That he was reversing the curses that came on Moab yes. and Edom. Yeah. When your people were coming out of the Exodus, right? Mm -hmm. They exited Egypt and came into the Arabian deserts and then were coming up through Edom yeah. and then through Moab. And starting with Edom, they were asked if they would please just let us come through. Yeah. And hospitality says, give them water, give them bread, give them a place to rest. And mm -hmm. Edom refused. Edom is their brother, it's Esau's mm -hmm. descendants. They came up to Moab, and Moab said the same thing. It was Ruth that broke that curse for... Because God had pronounced a curse over the Moabites for not welcoming Israel. These two would be served a, um, a curse, a judgment, mm -hmm. and they would not be allowed into the sanctuary of the Lord. But we know the Lord reversed that. And then we have this wow. young man. Yes totally unfamiliar with yes. the scriptures. He so much wanted to show us how they grind wheat and harvest it and we didn't have time for that so on the last day before we left he showed up with these two huge bags <laughs> of fresh ground flour yeah. and which made its way to Israel. When we got to the border we had yeah. a sheaf of wheat such a beautiful one as well that we picked up in the field. I know yeah. but then you had this young man's bags of flour beautifully fresh ground flour yes. it was amazing yeah. that made it across but yes. the wheat did not I know. and i was excited when you took that home and baked bread back then yes. ruth had no legal right to make it into bethlehem into the house of bread she needed to cleave to a jewish family to get that. It's interesting because today I as an Israeli, a Jew has no, I have no access to Bethlehem. Wow. Even when people invite me there, just legally that's the situation. But um, Ruth could do that because she made a choice mm -hmm. and she wanted to worship the God mm -hmm. of Israel, the, the, the God that Naomi worshipped. Mm -hmm. Ruth had no access into the house of the Redeemer without Naomi. Naomi mm -hmm. wouldn't have made it back mm -hmm. without Ruth. This brings our story so be beautifully into its climax because in God's plan, mm -hmm. the Gentiles are heathens that had no legal right into the kingdom unless they believed in the God of the Bible and chose to cleave to him and enter the house of the Redeemer. The Jews couldn't make it back home. 
without the help of Gentiles who understand their destiny and that we need to do it together. Mm -hmm. It's because of Ruth that Naomi is back in the house of the Redeemer mm -hmm. because the Redeemer fell in love with that young bride, mm -hmm. not with the old wrinkled bitter widow. But Ruth goes even further. She gives Naomi her son. Mm -hmm. And when he is born, uh, it's just crazy. Because when he is born, the neighbors say, a son has been born to Naomi, not to Ruth and Boaz. And this son restores and redeems and brings back the inheritance and the name of that family into the picture. And we know who the Messiah came from. They are the lineage of the Messiah. And today there is such a beautiful way that God still weaves that story again into the reality of our lives. Mm -hmm. As he uses you, Ruth, to bring me, to awaken in me, mm -hmm. as he used all the Ruth in our team, to awaken in me that destiny of a nation, of a mama, and not stay in that brokenness of widowhood so that we together can walk into the house of the Redeemer. Mm -hmm. I love the way that God in his beautiful love for the nations, for Israel and for the nations, and the genealogy found, I think it's in Matthew, is it? It is stated there so clearly that in the genealogy of the Messiah, the nations are present. You find Ruth, it's like you're talking. You find Ruth in the genealogy, you find Rahab, you find Tamar, Tamar. you find Bathsheba. Yeah. It's just amazing. These are all Gentile women. Every one of them. But yet, we are all called yeah. to walk together as one and mm -hmm. to enter into the house of the Redeemer as one together. It's amazing. And as you said, the one new woman. Or should you say the one new woman? <laughs>